Okay, welcome to another episode of Unbridled Medicine TV. I am super excited that I'm joined today by Sherry Teigman, who is a performance coach and creative strategist. Um, Sherry is somebody that I, we met on Facebook actually in a, I think group business program, right? I think we were both in CCC years ago. 100 years um, ago. 100 years ago, a long time ago. And I adore Sherry from a couple different lenses. Um, you know, she's helped me in my business. We've worked together on my end with her and just as a human being and um, what Sherry brings to the world. And I think to the space in terms of, um, you know, some of the stuff that I'm passionate about are helping people create businesses around their medicine. You know, Sherry has an amazing wisdom that she has to share as well. And so I wanted to bring her on for her to talk about her magic and her medicine and um, she kind of uses the word maverick or that's the uh, kind of archetype or energy that she speaks about. Um, I think she's absolutely brilliant. So I wanted to give her an opportunity to share um, from that perspective. And this is kind of what I asked Sherry to do kind of coming on here is what do we tell people or what do we really want to, what are we passionate about supporting the, our people um, when they're embarking on this path? And um, what I appreciate about sharing, and I think this is something that we align to in our ways that we speak to this, is, you know, doing things that aren't cookie cutter um, and and not, you know, following the rules or the formulas that we think we have to do, but kind of unleashing that, you know, rebel, basically, or maverick that you say. And so I, I love I love your work. Um, and so I will hand it over to you to, to, to share and to talk I'm trying about not it. to cry. That was so beautiful. The feeling is so equally mutual. This is a mutual adoration party here. Um, you've changed my life in so many ways when we work together, when you don't even realize you're impacting me <clears throat> just by being you over there and me over here. And it's funny because if you sat us next to each other and lined up business style and, well, not even the business style, but volume, <laughs> energy, <laughs> you would think we're polar opposites, but we're so much alike. We just are so ourselves in what we do. And it's very really interesting because we have a lot of similarities from our background. So it's funny because we both became this maverick unbridled version of ourselves around a different bend and ended up in a similar place, which I love and feel very akin to you. So thank you, first off, for having me. Thank you for those beautiful words. And I'm really excited to do this, not because these are not conversations we have all day with lots of people, which is wonderful, but to have it with you feels very full circle to me because you've helped me, I've helped you, we see the greatness in each other. So what a great gift to come together to help each other get the message out to help people like us who don't want to take the long way around. So I want to start off with that. Um, so I think to start with, um, to speak to your medicine, when people are starting off, the automatic, intuitive, what they think is intuitive was actually counterintuitive thing to do, is to find where they fit in the spectrum and line themselves up to fit. I'm not this, I'm not this. I'm kind of a little bit of this. Even if you ask someone new, what do you do? Well, I'm a diet version of Hillary, and I'm a little like Shari, and then I'm kind of Gary V, and I'm Gabby Bernstein. So basically, you're not anything yet, is really the answer. And, you know, I feel for people like that because I've been there as maverick and out of the box as I am. When I started, I looked like every other coach. My copy sounded like every other coach. I didn't know any different, and people don't know any different. And when their need to serve and, and help other people is so deeply ingrained, of course we want a shortcut and of course we want a template that will take us there faster so we can just have a bigger impact make the money to support our families and mainly help the people that we want to help but it is the short the shortest route to your success by doing it that way speaking from experience it takes years to then strip away the next version of marching in line that you do of well i put myself in these coaching packages and they don't sell and i don't know why so instead of changing it I'm going to spend three years banging my head against the wall, building up so much resistance, judging myself, spending money on coaches that I don't have, learning a new certification, piling on more papers around me, and then I'm going to get it right. 
I'm going to give away everything for free because that must be what the problem is. It's my charging. I'm charging too much. I'm going to discount everything. Um, I'm going to be in the friend zone so that my testimonials will speak for us. And I sound like I'm mocking it, but I'm not. I'm describing my own path. I did all of those things and more knowing better in the back of my head. I am naturally a maverick. So for people who are not naturally unbridled, a maverick, embrace their own medicine, this makes it even really hard because you and I are people who don't march to other people's tunes. And yet in business, we try to step in line because we thought it would get us fast, there faster. So number one, I would start off with, the greatest thing I could tell someone is to stop worrying about the pace. And when magic starts to happen and the manifestation start, process starts happening from taking action on what you intended, let me just put that out there very clearly, as Hillary taught me years ago, um, the timelines shrink very quickly. Your success path all of a sudden takes a sharp right turn and you get somewhere you never thought you would in a faster way with more um, profits, both emotional and financial, than you could have planned on your whiteboard with someone else's template. So if that gives anybody any comfort to know that I'm flat out telling you that the templates don't work and I'm flat out telling you it will take you longer to make money, just take that away from the whole interview. Shut off now if you don't want to hear the rest of it. But I wish I would have listened and I didn't know how to listen because I didn't know how to believe that. I think so there's a couple things and um and I love and it's so true I mean I think we especially I think when we met each other I I don't know if it's as loud as it was when we started or maybe it's because I'm not in those groups anymore but you know there there was a formula and there yeah. was I think like the this this copy of and I think I I remember having coaches even telling me when you know this is what it needs to be and there's a part of me like f that like that's not it's Which is authentic. But it's funny. You and I probably yeah. our whole lives did the F that. And then we thought, no, in business, we can't do our regular thing. I can't be a unicorn everywhere. Sit down, be a big girl, put your big girl panties on and just hold your nose and do it right. And then you can then go do what you want to do. Totally. Well, and I know for me, I think the biggest thing was like from my parents of, you know, my whole thing was people said, you're too woo woo and you have to be more mainstream and you have to that's not going to work, you know? And, um, so that was the, you know, I like to sort of look at, we all have those false beliefs that drive us and that we don't even know that drive us. And I know that, you know, part of your work is helping to dismantle that internally too, so we can be free. And I think that's part of why I wanted to talk about this too, because there's things that we don't even realize. Oh yeah. And I mean, I knew better too. And I, I think it was like, one of the things that I got to, I had to say to myself, this way of following what people tell me is how I need to do things. It's not working for me. Yeah. Like it's not making me more money. It's making me miserable. And, it's you know, not I, only not making money. It's not even a neutral path. That's the dangerous part. It creates yeah. so many new false beliefs that we didn't even have. Now I have a block I didn't know I had. Oh, I now have to solve this problem. Funny because that coach who told me that I had that problem also has a program that solves it. Hmm, look at that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And, and I think, I think there's, you know, I, and I also, I think what I appreciate about your work and kind of reading what you say and, and, you know, what you talk about is we need more encouragers or illuminators of, um, to not listen to the noise yeah. and to almost give permission to, because you said, it's not like we don't have that voice, you know, it's not like you know, even with my clients, when they come to me, it's like almost a relief that I encourage them to like, listen to your intuition and your gut and be authentic. And they're like, oh yeah, I kind of like know this, but I think when we feel the vulnerability of starting something, it's like, and you know, it is the self-belief, but we don't have the confidence to listen to that. And so we allow sort of that outside noise to come in to dictate our paths. And I think what I love about what you do is like, almost like unleashing um, the permission to listen to that, you know, what you say, the inner maverick voice of like, that's the voice you want to listen to, not the bullshit. But, you know, and people will say that I don't know which voice to listen to. And I want to say flat out and to use your saboteur word, which I love, because when you taught me that word, it sounded more elegant than inner asshole, which is the word that I use. Saboteur sounded more elegant in French. 
I don't know. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to listen to that voice, but it sounds fancy. Is we know the difference. We forget the difference. We start trusting something that's not real just because we give it more airtime. If you really get quiet enough, and I, neither of us, I want to say this flat out, are saying you have to reinvent the wheel. There are not systems and processes that matter. There are not structures that work. Absolutely not. And you and I have also made that mistake, me more than you, I think, um, because I think you have a responsibility that's different than mine of such a big nut to take care of over there. You can't play around. I mean, I'm a single mom of two kids. You were a single mom of lots of babies, even more than two kids. So there was not time to mess around. But this is not don't have structures in your system. Don't follow anything. Change your model every month. Change your title every month throw out offers, that's not intuition, that's messy business, that's not the same thing. When you lean deeper into it, your business gets much more simple. You're not creating things to prove anything. You are taking the time to test and tweak. You are nurturing an audience. That is true feminine expression, that is real power, and that's where good business gets built. Yeah. So how do you, because I'm curious, because I have like, you know, my tool and how I talk about this, but you know, for the people that come to you, like, how do you, how do you give them um, the tool or the encouragement of how do we know the difference? And like, for you, you said like intuition, we have to listen. So like, what's your interpretation of that? Or what do you tell your clients in terms of how they differentiate between the two voices and um, how do we support listening to that intuition? So like, great question. So a lot of my clients, don't have the space, you know, to you. The thing that I learned from you was making space in order to hear. And that was very hard for me because I don't naturally have that. I have a frenetic energy. You have a calm energy. So um, I'm not saying you don't get frenetic and I don't get calm, but it's not my natural go-to. So most of my clients have that frenetic hustle as their default. So if I tell them rightfully so, to calm down, slow down, and hear their intuition, I might as well tell them to stand on their head for an hour because they don't have it available yet. So I go very practical, which is unlike me. I'm trademarking it. I'm woo and do. So I'm both. Just depends on what you need from me, you'll get. Um, so the, I start with do because they're already in do mode. If I tell them to be they don't have that on a good day or a bad day. So I have to move into do with them to slowly walk them back to being a bit. So we start with unpacking. And I have a, I have a seven day signature program called Unpack because they still feel like they're doing something. So the example that I use is um, you go away with a bunch of friends on a weekend away for, I don't know, someone's birthday. And the night before everyone gets drunk and everyone in the morning is rushing to catch the plane. So you throw your stuff in your suitcase, you get on the plane, you get home, you open up your suitcase and you pick up somebody else's shoe. You immediately decipher in your mind, this isn't my shoe. And you go to your WhatsApp group, you text your friends and say, I have someone's size seven sneaker in my bag. Whose is it? We don't do this with emotions. We don't do this with fear. So we walk around with bags filled with stuff that doesn't belong to us. The saboteur voice that is trying to defend us and protect us from making more mistakes that make us feel shameful. Old stories that hold us back from real expansion and expression. And we make it our shoe. We try to be our own Cinderella here and shove our shoe. It's in my bag. It must belong to me. I must define myself by it. So what I start with is making space sorting through what's real and what's not. If that's too far, what's yours and what's not? Because if we can take 20% off the top, skim the top, 20% is not mine. In uni, this person told me that I couldn't speak in public and Shari, that's why I can't press play or I can't, I can't press record. Is, and flat, it's real for them. So I never diminish what someone's feeling. Is that going to help you or hinder you moving forward? Well, obviously it's gonna hinder me. How much longer do you want to carry? And frankly, the answer is sometimes a little longer. I'm not ready to put it down. But there's an honoring and a, and a witnessing of our own unpack to say, now I understand why my back hurts from carrying all of this. Now I understand why I procrastinate, which I think is our gut intuition stopping us from doing the wrong thing. I understand why my head is all fuzzy and I don't feel focused. I'm walking around with stuff that doesn't belong to me. Once I shed some of that baggage, 
I now have space for creative play, for strategic thinking, for understanding what my audience needs from me instead of an egoic creation of what I want to be known for. That's not how you build a business. I want to be known for helping people. What does that look like? That's what I do. That's not what I want to be known for. Yeah. I want to be known as a helper. Yeah. I really love that metaphor of unpacking and like suitcase because I think that's brilliant, really. Like I really, um, I love that. And I think that's such an easy way for people to like understand the concept of, you know, this is what we're doing in this work is, is teaching people to unpack. So that's, I think that's a brilliant way of putting that. Um, and I know, I know that one of the things that we know is, and this is why I think this is so important to address the inner mindset. You know, I call it inner landscaping. That's my word for it. The best language for anyone watching this, just live in her language and you will, oh, it's the most glorious you know, part of it having is, a Hillary I mean, moment. <laughs> part of it is, I think, honestly, where it comes from. I don't know, like, do you do the Enneagram or do you follow the Enneagram at all? Yes, and I'm like four different ones, which should not surprise you. So, so my my like my parents are my dad's like certified in it, but I always joke like I have this thing where I have to be unique. So of course I have to pick language that is different than what everybody else is. Using. You know, I do the same thing, which honestly, sometimes can confuse an audience because we make it so creative and different that they're like, I love that. I don't know what it means, but I love it. I, just, I love it. I want my medicine. Don't know what it means. Don't know what I'm brought, but you, what I love about how you teach is you use the language, but you simplified. It almost feels like we get to use another language, which lets us let go of things faster because we're not using our own stuff that we know that belongs yeah. to me. Well, that's a word I've never used, so I can now play freely with it. Yes. Well, and you know, I think in that too, like one of the things that I say to people too, is like, if a word doesn't resonate for you, don't use that word, mm -hmm. you know, pick something else and, and you get to define that. And I think that's the thing of like, where I think both of us are similar in terms of you use the word ma maverick. I use the word like unbridled. I, I want people to feel the freedom of expression of use the words that feel good for you. Don't use what everything else is out there. And it's, and um, that feels authentic to you, you yeah. know, don't. So language like limits us so much. So if we use words that have held us back in the past to try to change, of course we feel stuck. Yeah. The words don't have any expansion to them because they only have one definition in your mind. Yes, exactly. So I think that's a, you know, an, an important thing too of like, and that's often the inquiry I'll say to people is like deepen into what that word means to you and or pick something else that defines that um i want to go back because i think where what we're talking about and this is what i believe too and i say to my people i can tell you how to create a run a business you know create your offerings whatever that doesn't mean shit if you are you know to have no like it's like you're freaked out inside or in fear or whatever so i think like i always emphasize it's so important to figure out and to understand the psychology behind how you operate, you know, and address that because that is the driver of everything. And I think sometimes like, um, and, and, you know, I think both of us sort of got caught up in that too. Like what we were talking about when you start, when I started in the online business coaching, I was very naive. Like, I don't know what the hell was going on. Um, you know, you get caught up in this idea that, okay, if I just have this program laid out like that, or if I price it in this way, or if I do that thing. And so you do all those things, but you don't really address what's happening in here. You're not going to get anywhere. And yeah. so that's where I would say to like the foundation of all my programs. I'm like, I know you guys want to get into creating your programs. But I'm going to tell you something. We start here because you need to figure out what's going on internally with you and, and what drives you forward and how you're tending to your thoughts, because if that doesn't get fixed or tended to, you can take all the action in the world and create, and it doesn't, it's not going to go anywhere. Or you're probably not going to move anywhere um, because it's like, it's a, it's a big mess in here, or it's like your false self is driving you forward. So as long as that's happening or your saboteur, you know, you're going to be banging your head against the wall, like you said. So, you know, I think what I also love about your work is because you speak to that. It's like, here's actually the thing. This is the work. The other stuff is easy, actually. Yeah. This is the work. Yeah. It's, I love all of that. And I've 
a million things to say, but I'm going to attempt to stick to two because we know how that goes with me. So when I teach this, I teach literally in three sections, inner realm, no, inner, what do I call it? Oh my God, now I'm annoyed, I can't remember my words. There's the inner aspect, there's the outer realm of reintroducing yourself into relating to other people. So we've got to clean up the internal landscape, as you would say. Then we have the outer realm, and then there's the realm of possibility. So there are three layers to this. So that's number one. They all relate to each other, but they also function separately. Most people, frankly, want to jump to realm of possibility. Well, I saw online someone makes 50K a month. Well, you need a container to be that person to create a business like that. So the next piece, which is so key and may sound weird, but I want everyone to sit here and listen with me. I think businesses are breathing entities. I think they are living beings that have fears and emotions and expressions separate from us. It's like creating Frankenstein and then it goes and Frankenstein's at you. If you are in a bad relationship with your business, I had this conversation with a client this morning. If you're in an abusive relationship with your business, where your business and you only communicate in panic, where you're demanding things from each other and ignore each other the rest of the time, how do you think the result of that baby is going to be? It ain't going to be pretty and it's not going to be sustainable. On the other hand, if you have a business that overpowers you or you overpower it, you are not in expansion mode, you're in survival and defensive mode, both of you all the time. But if you have a beautiful business with tons of potential and possibility, and you have a human being and a soul who is ready to be at that level to, to, to function up here, the only, way that my, the, I, the only way I've grown as a person is by building a business. I wouldn't have looked at three quarters of the stuff I've worked on on myself unless my business needed me to. I would have sat in my old crap. I would have made excuses and stayed in victim mode. There's still stuff I work on every single day, but my business needs a maverick version of me. I have tears in my eyes to say this, to step up and get out of my own way, to be the messenger of my mission, to help the people that need me. I have no right to stay stuck in my own mind. I was called to something. This is my purpose, which means my business requires me to step up, clean up my mess away from my audience. Doesn't mean I don't share. I do very vulnerably, but to give myself that attention, that self-care, that self-belief and that hard work and deep work to say, who are you going to be to show up here? Would I fire myself if I hired myself? Probably some days. That's not optimal at C um, CEO of a company. That's like some whiny girl in the corner moaning about how she's scared. Well, businesses don't run like that. Not loved full ones, love over metrics, ones filled with expansion, loves filled with service. Get up, clean up your mess and get out there, girl. I love, I think, and I say, I that was a big turning point for me too, where I use that metaphor of my business as an entity and it's separate from me. And I think I realized I can't run my business from my personal belief system because I'm effing it up basically. And that was, I think, a, and I, I say to people that way too, it's like, we cannot create from our personal beliefs yeah. because it's not, um, well, it's not wisdom. And also like, same as you, I have had to do stuff that is grossly uncomfortable for the aspect of my personality that's like an introvert and all of that stuff that like I don't want to be seen. It's I don't want to like myself. Like people think like they're oh you're so good at it you must love it. I'm like no I don't. But I but I understand, you know. And I love that you mentioned purpose. It's like I think that's also the ability of. And this is what I was going to ask. I want to ask you a question about this. It's like that's our that's my anchor. It's like my it's it's bigger than just exactly what Hillary the introvert wants and needs from life. And that part of me can get that, you know, there's definitely weekends where like, you know, um, my partner makes fun of me because I'll sit and read my, my fantasy novels for like 10 hours. It's a recharge. It's a rest day between training. It really is. That's right. right. But that's not the part of me that I bring forward to create and hold space for my business because it's not going to. And um, I wouldn't have done, probably 90% of the stuff that I've done in my business if I led from that place. And I think that that's a powerful 
invitation for people of like, you have to connect, you call it your maverick. I, I, I call it like your inner wise woman or. Yep. Well, because it's just, you know, it's whatever, um, whatever, whatever archetype inner. grabs you that Sasha Fierce and Beyonce, it's Sasha That's Fierce, right. Beyonce, I have no doubt wants to be on her couch in sweatpants, eating chocolate like every other woman with little kids or a husband or a big business that's bothering her. Sasha Fierce gets up on stage no matter what mood she's in. That's not split personality. That's nurturing yourself to not have to be everything for everyone 24 hours a day. That's what that is. Totally. And I think that's knowing like, you know, when to tap into those different parts and like, I, I, you know, and to when to nurture them. So it's not like we deny that we have that aspect of our personality but we don't lead our businesses with it. And I think that- I also that burn out. I've burned out so many times giving everything full push. I am a lot of energy. If I stay like this all the time, which I used to try to because this is what my business needed from me, the driver needed a nap in the middle of the bus ride. That's terrible. I, I get sick a lot because of it. I'm getting better at it. I'm not great at it still. Well, it's not, you know, and that's the humanness of it. I mean, like, it's still a work. And that's why I tell people, it's like, and that's why I try to share a lot of, like, my own vulnerabilities. Because, like, listen, I still have to do the work. It's not like I've perfected anything. It's just. Which is why I chose you when I hired you all those years ago. Because of that vulnerability. Because you didn't play perfect. Because you showed me that the things I struggle with are struggles that you have. And you also had the results that I wanted. Yeah. And I think that that's an important you know, and I tell my clients this too. I said, listen, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, this is work and you will have to practice this every day. And it's not like you, you, you get over something and it never shows up again. It's like, I have to tend to, that's why I use the metaphor of internal landscaping, because it's like a, a garden you can't plant and then never tend to it. Like there's always going to be weeds. So you have to pull it. So it's like, you, you've got to know it's a way of being and you're, we're a constant work in progress all the time, but it doesn't mean that we don't have something to share. Um, there's something I wanted, cause I, I think that, you know, and, and why I like to have some of these vulnerable conversations is I want people to kind of look to us and relate and be like, oh, they're just like me. So if that person can do it, I can do it too. Um, but I'm interested, I think you, you, uh, you kind of spoke it in terms of this is my purpose. Um, when we hit those places of rock bottom, and we know we both have been there in terms of, you know, looking at really scary realities of having financial responsibility, having debt, and like, you know, I need to figure this shit out because I don't have anything else I can rely on other than I need to create this. And there's like, there's lives dependent. And, 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 you know, I wouldn't like, I think raising children and having children is, probably equal to or as much as the responsibility as I have with X amount of horses I have. And, but yeah, I have a large overhead compared to some other businesses. I have a very large overhead. Um, but like when you've had those rock bottom places, what has been for you, the places that you've gone to that has supported you to come out of those, or that is like, I call them like my anchors or my lifelines that I come back to, to move through it. What, what is that for you? Great question. Um, and they happen to me often, everyone. It's not like a once in a while thing. Every time I expand, I slam down all the way because it's just, it's a, an expansion fatigue. It really is. It's, I, I don't know that I'm, I, this could be a limiting belief of mine. I don't know that I'm wired for quantum leaps. They scare me. As maverick as I am and as much as I move through, client of mine calls me an expert. what do you say? exponentializer like i expand other people i crave a lot of safety and security i do not like to be scared i've been a lot through a lot of trauma in my life that makes me scared if things move too quickly i don't trust very quickly so be mindful that this isn't some pretty picture that i just launched something and it goes well i've had failed launches i get scared when things work i get scared when they don't work it doesn't go away ironically I have two answers. My first answer is I have to force myself to sit in it. And that's the scariest part for me. I'm so used to being this scrappy survivor that I bounce quickly. I'm like Tigger, like, no, nothing's going to break me. I'm this tough New Yorker. Rah, 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 and then I crack. 
slowing down and feeling what I'm feeling. I'm really scared. I feel like a little girl right now. This doesn't feel like it's safe. This doesn't feel like it's mine. Someone's going to take it away from me. I can't get up from here. This has taken me years to allow myself to be that person as well as a successful business person. That I can be full maverick and full little girl at the same time is where my greatest growth point is because I don't want to live in survivor energy all the time. I come from it culturally and, and you know, um, Traditionally, it's something I'm wired for and it's something I have to untangle often from my heritage to not lean into what I'm wired for because I do it really well and my adrenals will tell you how well I do it. I have none left. So sitting and feeling and knowing that I create my own safety even when things are wobbly uh, is my number one anchor that the bottom doesn't mean danger. The bottom means mine. And the reason I say that is because then I get up faster. When I spin out running away from my actual feelings, I stay and spin out far longer than if I let myself rest, I let myself feel, I journal, I cry, I call a friend, I hire a coach, help sit in it with me, let me move through it, are we, are we done yet? And they have to hold me down under the water because I will be doing this. See, I'm like this little, I'm like a chihuahua. That's not energy that is sustainable success energy. And it's what I naturally am. So I've had to train my energy to sit and feel. And number two, to be honest with you, I'm naturally a joyful person. Even though I'm jaded and scrappy, I'm also, I'm, I believe in possibility even when I don't know how to make it. So I believe in my purpose so much. I believe in other people so much that when I know I sit for too long in my own crap, the people who need me don't get me. And I know no one is like me which means they're going to take that plug and plug into something that's going to make them feel more broken. That's going to take them longer to get there. That's going to waste money. They don't have to waste. That's going to make them believe things about themselves. That is not true. And I can't sleep at night knowing that there are people that I can help are waiting for me to pull my head out of my own ass. So it moves me through faster. Yeah. I love both of those things. And I think that we all have our versions of, um, the story I think that really hooks us when stuff is feeling hard. And I know, you know, we have the same kind of cultural background. Um, and, but I, I had one too of being the eldest, I have to be the strong one. And so I resisted, this is still a practice for me of allowing myself to be in the vulnerability because I have the story that I can't do that because people are relying on me to be the strong one. So yeah. I can't afford like, have a breakdown. I think it's really healthy to have those moments where you just acknowledge I'm, I'm terrified. And sometimes I, I create that. And I, I think too, it's like, you'll get through it quickly when you just sort of let yourself be in your vulnerability. And it doesn't mean, like you said, it doesn't mean that you're not strong, but that's a false, that's a false perspective of strength or survival. When thousand you're not, percent. It, it's not, that's not what that is. So I think that as much as it's uncomfortable for us or we resist that, or we create a story in our head that, and I get this a lot from my clients, that fear of like, how can I mentor or coach or lead people when I'm a mess? And it's like, human beings are a mess. And it's not realistic for us to think that we're not going to have our mess or be in our mess. And it doesn't take away from our brilliance. No, nope. but sometimes we need like, I need a time out to just have a little bit of a breakdown today. Um, I tend to like, you know, what I offer to people is put a boundary around that because we can either go two ways or we just don't create space at all, or we, we marinate in it for a little bit too long. So it's like that kind of that being, and that's where I think having mentors and stuff is really supportive or community because they can kind of like support that. Am I overdoing it? Cause we can, that's another saboteur. For sure. Um, like I tell my people like, listen, if y'all are processing for months on end, y'all aren't processing. Exactly. You're, you're, you're like nestling, <laughs> you're decorating the cage. That's not the goal. Yeah, that's not, you know, but having those moments of like, I need the afternoon to like, just be with the fact that I'm afraid and to, to let myself be afraid. And just to, I mean, that's relieving that I don't have to pretend. Um, and then we find our relief through that. You know, I think the thing I say to people, and I learned this a little bit through the horses, is like, there's something on the other side of that, mm -hmm. but we have to go 
through that to get there. So whether it's possibility or expansion or strength or whatever, you got to go through your fear and, and be uncomfortable. And then I think the other thing you said that this is important, it's, um, and, and I love that you have that belief that there are people that need me. Um, and we it annoyingly that. keeps me up at night, Hillary. Sometimes I would be like, can someone just take them so I don't have to also be worrying about them, but I'm wired for Jewish mothering. I can't help it. <laughs> yes. But, you know, I think it's an important thing of like, you make it, it's not just about you, you know? Yeah. And so to find that thing of like, and I, you know, what I often offer to like my community is that idea that there are thousands of people that are waiting for you. And, and your unique medicine, you know, that's my languaging for it. And to know that, and it's not just about, it's, it's that acknowledgement of like, oh, right, there's something also outside of me that is going to benefit from me being in the world. And I think that having those reminders of like, okay, this is what I need to have when I'm in that place. So I don't stay there over to like what I need. Um, but whatever that driver is going to be for you. So whether it is like, you know, connecting to, and I think most of the, you know, for our people, they're driven by a place of, I, there's people I want to serve. Like that's yes. really the authenticity of why we're creating a business is because we want to. Yes. And yes. in the moment, if that's not what lifts you up, don't beat yourself up. Like, I don't believe in my mission as much as Sherry and Hillary. That's not what we're saying either. If it's just, I want to pay this bill this month. I'm tired of being in this position. That's enough too. It doesn't have to be this big altruistic thing. I think for us it is because we've worked through the, what we would call like the lower annoying ones that drive us crazy, that we needed to find bigger ones because the little ones weren't working anymore. Just, just so you know, it's a big responsibility to worry about everyone. It's not so easy over here. Yeah, but I think the other thing too, and this is where I think to have both, Yes. Of what matters sure. to you. And then I also tell people, and what's selfish for you? Like what, why does it matter to you? I, I think like my version of that is, is I don't, I don't want to get to the end of my life and be like, you know, how I lived my life was through fear. Like that mm -hmm. would be a way of life for me. So it's like, what's my personal, what would be my personal regret? So it's like, at the end of the day, I can sleep because I know that I've shown up. And so that just feels good in terms of like how I want to live my life, regardless of anything else. So I think it's a duality of, and I'm glad you brought up that point of like, because sometimes it is overwhelming of like, well, in this moment, I don't really give a shit about anybody else. Exactly. And so that's not the thing. So it's like, so then be selfish for a moment. And why does it matter to you in terms of what do you want for your life? Whether that is to create a certain lifestyle for yourself, which I think there's nothing wrong with that. Um, or, you know, an element of fulfillment of, I mean, I wanted to have an 80 acre prop or property so that I could have lots of horses. And, you know, that required a certain thing to, to create to get that. Um, so there's a selfishness of that too. You know, I, I love my life because I have joy in my life, not just because I'm rescuing horses or helping people. It's because this is a life I wanted to create for myself. I wanted to live this way since I was a kid. I wanted to live on a farm, right? So it's, it's, I think, having that definition of, and to think about that. I think that's the thing I often, I hope people get encouraged about this is, is to think about that. Like what and it, it really is fun? both. I, I love that you pointed that out because I guess my answers were one of each and one without the other won't work. If you deplete yourself only to be for the greater good of everyone, I mean, Mother Teresa probably had some time to herself too. So it's not okay to give up yourself for the betterment of your purpose. There won't be a purpose because you won't make it happen. And it's not okay to get lost in yourself and ignore your medicine because it'll chase you anyway and drive you crazy, honestly, <laughs> till you listen. Yeah, one without the other. And it is, I think I've had that experience. The abandonment of myself did not create fulfillment. It cr actually created depression. Absolutely. And so, yeah, so you, you feel like this empty vessel that everyone's pecking at and, and the annoyance builds and then you don't actually want to do what you want to do anyway. So skip that one, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's a whole like, I could do a whole episode on that, which I Same. probably will. Um, uh, I know we could probably, I mean, we'll, I should have you on more because there's a lot that we can we'll come on about. whenever you'd like me. Yes, but you know, I, I think what's important about, and I, that's why I wanted to have you on because I love, I love what you 
I love your magic and I love your brilliance and I love the things that you offer. Um, what are you like, so for the takeaways for people that are listening or watching this, what would you kind of underscore emphasize in terms of, you know, if you're starting or if you're on this path, here's the one or two or three things that I would say are so important for you to, to, to hold now. What would those be? So I'm going to give an answer that is so not a Shari answer. You'll probably be shocked by this. I actually have like a system that I use in my mind. Shari said system. Only because I've seen it so many times that at this point, the big philosophies that you and I love are sometimes too big for bite size. So I have a system. It's called the Maverick Method. And it's in that moment when you don't know what to do, you do these three things. You unpack. You unbelieve what is no longer true for me, what is standing in my way, what is, after you unpack and find out what's not yours, you move into unbelief. I'm now sitting in front of stuff all outside of me. If I want to recreate myself, if I want to get to a place I haven't been yet, not to be a new me, but to be a better me or be ready for a business that I want to build, what do I need to unbelieve? Because there's no room in your hands to build more things until you take away what is no longer. So it doesn't keep coming up and biting you. So unpack unbelief and then understand. Why are you so driven? Why is this waking you up at night? Why are you so frustrated? Frustration is the... So for me, creative everything is run by creativity and curiosity. We all have imaginations. Our imaginations can create anxiety and disaster and depression and our imaginations can create creativity and expansion. It's the same muscle. So understand why you're at that precipice of where you are and choose red pill, blue pill. Like what is it gonna look like on a daily basis? Some of us are so big vision, self-included, that the day to day on a Tuesday afternoon is really hard to live in because it's not big enough yet. So it becomes from understanding I'm very feelings driven. So every day is led by a feeling I choose in the morning. If, if my day is, con is connection, that's not a day I force myself into admin work. It's not going to work. This doesn't mean I'm avoiding. It means I'm listening. That's where the intuition comes into play in terms of action. I know what to do. My inner, my inner landscape and my inner GPS are like, dude, we've got this. Stop fighting us and we'll get you there faster. Oh, I could stop fighting. Let me start listening. That's where, is there anything else I have to unpack? Am I believing stuff that isn't true? And what do I need to understand in order to move forward? If you use those three things every day, you won't believe the results that start happening in your life. I love that. And, and to um, further that, because I know you kind of mentioned you have like, so if somebody said, Sherry, I love what you talk about. I need to experience you and, and that, where do they go? So where can they start? Um, so you? my new brand is about to launch, actually. So my website is sharryteegman.com. It'll just take you to a landing page at the moment. And then soon all of the creative explosions are about to unleash. Um, so right now, the best place to find me, I hang out on Facebook and Instagram a lot. I talk a lot. I never shut up. Um, there's a lot of this at all times. There's tons of videos. There's free resources come hang out with me. I love to meet new people. Hillary and I are the same in that we think everyone has magic and medicine. So I'm nowhere more ahead than you are. I just hold a different container. So come introduce yourself. Tell me you met me through the interview. Let me know what your medicine is. Tell me what you're working on. Send me a message on my Facebook page. It's me answering. I don't have 10 people answering one day I may, but probably not because I like to be in connection. So, um, Come let me know what you're looking for, what you're craving. You know, I really equally do the mindset and the strategy because I don't think they could be separated, but they get fueled from the same better questions, curious answers, creative what ifs. So there's so, I mean, I, I call, on my new website, my copy is, I'm the strategic play date for brilliant people who can't unstick themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And, and having, like I said, I've, um, I've known Sherry for, I don't know how long has it been now, like five years. Probably. Um, crazy. Um, and uh, like, she's just wonderful to be in her spaces. And I, I love what she shares and talks about. I've been able to experience, you know, her magic on some of my stuff and vice versa. Um, and I think it's important. Like one of the things I think is so good is we're going to have lots of magic and medicine and support that we need over the course of our business. And 
um, I can't be, I'm not everything for people too. Um, so I think that, and I'm hoping to bring people that I also really believe in and I think do great work. So you have a buffet of people to be like, I think I need what Sherry has to offer. So I encourage you guys to just even just go follow her. Um, I know you do free challenges and stuff all the time as a good kind of taster and you have your membership, which I know all of that stuff will be launched. So um, give her a follow. Um, depending on when you watch this video, um, Sherry will be coming to my farm whenever whenever we're allowed to. I am packed and ready, and my ticket is already there waiting. It was meant to be. It will continue to be meant to be. I'm very sad. But I know. It's, It'll be uh, worth wait. Sherry will be at my ranch in, well, September, again, depending on when this rolls out. Um, but hopefully she'll she'll come and you know do stuff with me more than once. Yes. Um, so there is, and I'll add all these kind of links to to the uh, the YouTube so you guys can check that out. Um, in terms of where to find Sherry, and then also of course if you want to like follow me, you can do that too. I have a seven days to unbridling your medicine free. It's so good. I've done it by the way. Yeah, which was funny. Talk about imperfection. I'll just leave like that. I mean. I, I have rural internet and like I'm in my loft right now and I remember looking at those videos and be like I can't even believe I'm putting this out to the public right now because my hair's a mess and whatever but you know what it's so content. perfect and this you're so perfect and this is a perfect this is such like a silly feminine thing like my hair like with your brilliance and magic that we would sit and worry about hair, but we do. And that's the thing. If we let that stuff come, I mean, we joked around before and I don't mind showing it. I'm in pajama pants. I have a bra on, so this is big. My roots are showing. I've got a headband on because my hair is this big. If we let that stuff stop us, and I can't tell you that sometimes I don't, all that magic gets rolled up in like regular girl stuff. Like, really? Come on. And you know what, your people, like this is the thing, and I know my people tell me like, we love you because you're authentic. And like yeah. sometimes your dog's barking in the back. And, and that's the point, you know, I think it's just, just get your stuff out there. It doesn't matter what it looks like or it's it's raw, whatever, because the point is, is you're letting your magic be felt. And the people that really need to ingest it, they don't give a shit. Of they won't even they notice it. And if they notice it, it's probably why they'll choose you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's, uh, so I just, I think I'm a notorious person for just, just get it out there. The best. <laughs> Not perfect. I remember um, you okay. launched your manifestation course, this whopper of a course. I don't know if it's still up. If it is, everyone go buy it. I should say. If it isn't, then you missed out. It's amazing. I printed out the worksheet. I think I, I used up like an entire pack of paper. It's a whopper. It's not one of these light ones. She whipped it out. She's like, I'm going to do a manifestation course. I'm thinking it's going to be like three videos. It was like a master's degree. So yeah, don't okay. wait because then the world missed out on all of that. I've run through the program three times. I've never even told you that. I, well, thank you. My manifesting mastery course is, it is, it's in my courses. Um, so I do have it as a do it yourself. So it is up there and it is, I think I spent three weeks doing it and um, yeah, it's like, I think an 89 page manual and like, I don't it's know how many. Amazing. Pages. And like each yeah. page you like is enough to change someone's life. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank so you. that is available on my website on Hillary Schneider.com. And I think it's under courses. Um, it's manifesting mastery up there and yeah, it's a powerful course. I created that course after I manifested my ranch. Cause I think I was part of like, if I pull this off, then I can, then I can create a course. So thank you. But yeah, a lot of magic. Um, thank, you. thank you so much for doing this with me. And I look forward to more. Um, I love you. And I'm happy that, you know, if people don't already know about you, that now they get to be exposed to you and what you, what you do. Um, please go follow Sherry. Everything will be in the YouTube link. And then, you know, I always say to people too, it's like, and we didn't talk about this too much, but um, we do need help. And I think that teachers or mentors or coaches show up when we need what they have to offer. So if you have an urge um, that you've been looking for help and Sherry really resonates with you or I really resonate with you, um, follow that urge. Because I think that I mean, it's, it's, we need mentors and I have them, you know, I've tapped into Sherry's and I'm right that, back. And, yep. um,
follow that urge, you know, if it's like, I need what that woman has to offer, um, th th it will do something for you. So in whatever capacity that is, uh, listen to that. Um, I know Sherry takes care of her people really well. I wouldn't encourage that connection if I, you know, I, I trust her with my life and with my business right and with my kids. Right back. Especially when she yeah. puts me in a, in a herd of horses that I'm going to stand in when I just got over my dog fear. I last year would have had enough trouble standing in your kitchen, let alone going outside. <laughs> yeah. We'll start, we'll start with Odin, who essentially is like a mini horse, and then we'll go. And, I, and I'm tiny, so Odin will be my first horse. And then there's a chicken that walks by. I mean, there's a lot I'm prepping myself for. There's a lot. The, yesterday, actually, Sebastian... Um, my partner was like, there's a chicken in our house. I'm like, yeah, that's that time of year again. <laughs> so I can't, I just want to come live with you. It's like Dr. Doolittle and you don't notice if you ever watch any of Hillary's <laughs> videos, she's talking to everyone like they're people. And I feel like they answer. It's fascinating. I know they do. Um, anyways. Okay. So you follow me on Instagram too. You can see all the, yes, you know, the, the behind the scenes <laughs> magic. On the zines magic of my life at the farm. Um, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you guys for tuning in and um, hope to see you on the next episode. And feel free to share this pass along, you know, to other people that you feel might benefit from listening. And then hopefully we'll see you guys on Facebook, Instagram, or in our communities. Um, so thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you.